Jai, okay, so we're reading the Ishopanishad and we're on mantra number 14, but we're nearly finished the purport here. All right, so we're reading the purport and it's explained no one can dominate Krishna. Krishna is the Supreme Lord above everyone. But the conditioned souls, because of the because of their conditioning, we want to dominate the material nature. Uh, but we are under the laws of the material nature. We cannot conquer them. We are under the control of the material nature. And the sign that we are under the material nature is that we are suffering birth and death. So when Krishna comes in this world, he comes to establish the principle of religion. And the principle, the highest principle of religion is to surrender to Krishna. This is, of course, taken the final instruction of the Bhagavad Gita. But foolish people, they they don't understand this message. And they mislead people in so many foolish ways. And people do things like open hospitals and open uh, schools. And if they open the school, they'll just give mundane knowledge, material knowledge. They won't give the real spiritual knowledge. So people have been taught just to take an interest in social work, in temporary welfare, material activities. But that we can never bring real happiness to the people. And they will open all kinds of uh, the public or that they'll begin so many different foundations or societies just for material benefit. But they don't understand the nature of the material world. And sometimes people advertise themselves as being a big scholar of the Bhagavad Gita. But they don't see the real message of the Bhagavad Gita. If we want 
to get free from the material energy, we have to become Krishna conscious. So from this mantra, we are learning that we have to know that we have to know the Supreme Lord and we have to know also the nature of the material world. We have to know both. We have to know about the Supreme Lord and we have to know about the miseries of the material world. If we only know about the miseries of the material world, that's not enough. Because there's always going to be misery and suffering in this world. And so if you may open a hospital, it's not going to save you from old age and disease and death. We have to get complete knowledge. Of, we have to understand about the nature of the, the spiritual world as well as the material world. So the Vedas are there to teach us about both the material world and the spiritual world. So we have to be careful not to be tricked, not to be attracted by sense gratification. If we if we don't control our mind and senses, then we will we'll go and we'll get into trouble. So if we want to save ourselves, we have to know what is the right thing to do. We cannot change the nature of the material world. So if we want to be safe from birth and death, we have to take to devotional service. It's the only way out of the material existence. Okay, so we're going to go on now to Mantra 15. Haranmayena patrena satyasya pihitam mukam tatvam pusana pavarno satya dharmaya dristaye. O my Lord, sustainer of all that lives, your real face is covered by your dazzling effulgence. Kindly remove that covering and exhibit yourself to your pure devotee. So we see this mantra, this is actually the devotee offering a prayer to the Lord. And 
ถวายบทมนีให้กับคริสนา I think uh, there's a, one of the manus. f i n e b u v a manu is offering prayers to the supreme lord. อันนี้เนี่ยเป็นตอนที่โซยมบัวมานูเนี่ยถวายบทมนีให้กับองค์พระหวาน So he's praying to the lord that I I I want to see your your face, but you're covered by so much effulgence. There's this dazzling effulgence. So please remove that effulgence so that I can see your real face. ก็เป็นการปรารถนาให้พระองค์เนี่ยทรงเอาความเจิดจาของพระองค์ที่ปกคลุมพระพักของพระองค์เนี่ยออกไปเพื่อภาวยาจะแบบว่าทอดพระเนตรหน้าของพระองค์ที่แท้จริงดวงหน้าของพระองค์ So sometimes people think the goal of life is to see some light บางครั้งเนี่ยผู้คนคิดว่าจุดมุ่งหมายสูงสุดของชีวิตคือการได้เห็นแสง But Here we see the prayer is remove the light. We want to see what's higher, something other than the light. One time the devotees were all chanting, and there was one young woman there. She was chanting, and she said, "Oh, Swami Ji," she said to Prabhupada. She said, "When I chant." I see this bright light. เวลามีครั้งหนึ่งผู้หญิงคนหนึ่งบอกกับศิลปราบานบอกว่าพระผู้พานค่ะเวลาดิฉันสวดนะคะดิฉันเนี่ยเห็นแสงสว่าง So Prabhupada said to her, "Okay, keep chanting; it will go away." และศิลปราบานก็ตอบกับหญิงสาวคนนั้นไปว่าจงสวดมนต์ต่อไปแล้วมันจะหายไปเอง So don't think seeing the light is the goal. That's not the goal. อย่าคิดว่าการได้เห็นแสงสว่างเนี่ยมันคือจุดมุ่งหมายสูงสุดมันไม่ใช่จุดมุ่งหมายสูงสุด The goal is to see the the real the the form of the Lord the face of the Lord จุดมุ่งหมายเนี่ยคือการที่ได้เห็นได้เห็นพระผู้เป็นเจ้า Okay so we'll read Prabhupada's purport text this mantra 15 Bhagavad Gita 14:27, the the Lord explains that His personal rays, Brahma j o y t i the dazzling effulgence of His personal form, in this way. ในคำอธิบายนะบอกว่าเสวานสอนอธิบายบอกว่าในพระกวดกิตา 14.27 องค์พระขวานทรงอธิบายถึงรัศมีบรมโจติอันเจริจัดอันเจริจัดจากรูปรักส่วนตัวของพระองค์ดังต่อไปนี้ So the Brahma j o y t i are the rays which coming from the body of Lord Krishna ดังพระมโจติเนี่ยเป็นแสงที่มาจากแสงรัศมีที่ส่องสว่างจากพระวรกายของคริสนา So the, here the verse is from the Bhagavad Gita 14th chapter b r a h m a n o h i p r a t i s t a h a m a m r i t a s y a v a y a s y a c h a ชาสวัตเชียชาดาร์มาชียสุขเชียคันติกาเชียชา I am the basis of the impersonal Brahman, which is immortal, imperishable, and eternal, and is the constitutional position of ultimate happiness. ถ้าคือฐานของบรมานอันไรรูปลักที่ไม่มีวันตายไม่มีวันถูกทำลายและเป็นอมตะซึ่งเป็นสภาวะเดิมแท้แห่งความสุขที่สูงสุด So sometimes people misunderstand. They think that Krishna comes from the Brahman, and ultimately it's the Brahman which is supreme. ประจานบางครั้งเนี่ยผู้คนเข้าใจผิดคิดว่า Krishna เนี่ยมาจากประมาณและประมาณเนี่ยคือเป็นสัตธรรมสูงสุดกว่า Krishna But the Brahman comes from Krishna. The Brahman is under Krishna. The Brahman is the light coming from Krishna. So the the light has a source, and the source is Krishna. Krishna. และแหล่งกำเนิดของพระบรมานเนี่ยจะต้องมามีแหล่งกำเนิด
There actually, the, well, the absolute truth appears in three different features, and one is Brahman, another is Paramatma, and then Bhagavan. Now, Brahman is the easiest thing for people to understand or perceive in the beginning. So Brahman is what people understand in the beginning. And Paramatma, that's the super soul, the Lord in the heart of everything. So Paramatma is when people are a bit more advanced, they go beyond Brahman and they come to Paramatma. But that, that, if they keep going after Paramatma, then they can come to Bhagavan realization. So Bhagavan is the full realization of the Absolute Truth. And Bhagavan realization includes Brahman realization and Paramatma realization. So if somebody knows only Brahman, they've not understood Paramatma and Bhagavan. So, from the Bhagavad Gita, uh, we get the, the famous verse, chapter 7, text 7, where, we, uh, where it's said that Lord Krishna is the highest truth. Yeah, the verse is quoted there. Mata parataram nanyat kinchid asti dananjaya. Krishna is saying, There is no truth superior to me. So Lord Krishna himself establishes his position that he's the highest truth. And everything comes from him, including the Brahma Jyoti, it also comes from him. And the Paramatma is simply the expansion of Krishna. And then, so Prabhupada quotes that verse from the, the end of the 10th chapter of the Bhagavad Gita. In the 10th chapter of the Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna had spoken many of his different opulences. Uh, he was Krishna, Lord Krishna was saying that I am the taste in water, the sound in ether, the light of the sun and the moon. And he, and he was saying of flowing rivers, I am the Ganges. 
And of beasts, I am the lion. And of mountains, I am Meru. And of immovable things, I am the Himalayas. And Lord Krishna went through many, many different opulences. It described it describes how he is present in so many different ways. But then at the end of the chapter, Lord Krishna quotes this verse, which is given here from the 10th chapter. Atava bahunaitena kim gyatena tavarjuna vishtabi aham midam kritsnam ekam shenas to jagat. But what need is there, Arjuna, for all this detailed knowledge? With a single fragment of myself, I pervade and support this entire universe. Arjuna, me kwam jampen andai. กับรายละเอียดของความรู้เพียงส่วนนิดเดียวของตัวข้าก็ได้แผ่กระจายไปทั่วและคำจุนทั่วทั้งจักรวาลนี้ So you can see the last line eka amsha ena stito jagat the eka means one and amsha a single fragment by a single fragment of myself I pervade and support everything มีคำว่าเอคาวังชะเนี่ยมันแปลว่าอะไรมันแปลว่าแค่ข้าแค่แค่รู้จักข้าเนี่ยก็เธอก็จะรู้แล้วเพราะข้าเนี่ยเป็นผู้ค้ำจุนทั้งจักรวาลแล้วก็อยู่ทุกคนแพร่กระจายไปทั่ว So Lord Krishna by his one expansion the super soul he is doing all of, maintaining everything แล้วพระองค์เจ้าพระชาเนี่ยแค่ในแค่จากการที่พระองค์ทรงแบ่งกระเจ้าออกมาเป็นองค์อภิวิญญาณเนี่ยท่านทำงานในการค้ำจุนทุกสิ่งทุกอย่าง We should understand there's only one super soul, but he's appearing everywhere in everyone's heart. เราจะต้องเข้าใจก่อนว่ามีองค์อภิวิญญาณเนี่ยแค่พระองค์เดียวเท่านั้นซึ่งพระองค์เดียวเท่านั้นเนี่ยทรงอยู่กับทุกทุกสิ่งในชีวิต So just by that one form. Krishna is doing so many things. And Krishna maintains all the forms in the spiritual world also. So we see here in this Vedic mantra, the Sri i s h o p a n i s h a d is from the Vedas. So Krishna is addressed. Krishna is being described as the ultimate maintainer. The word in Sanskrit is Pushan. So this is Krishna's supreme position. So although Krishna is maintaining everything, it's not a burden for him. It, it, he, he, Krishna is always enjoying so much bliss. Sometimes, you know, somebody may be maintaining others, and he may feel it's very difficult to support everybody, and he feels it so much the burden. But Krishna is maintaining everyone, and at the same time, he is enjoying. So when he was in Vrindavan, Krishna was appeared in Vrindavan five thousand years ago. He was always in bliss. 
พราะฉะนั้นตอนที่กุชนาเนี่ยทรงปรากฏเมื่อประมาณ 5,000 ปีที่แล้วที่บรรดาบ้านเนี่ยพระองค์ทรงมีความเพลิ่มปิติสุขทิพย์ในอยู่ตลอด As a young boy, he had many childhood pastimes, and he was often dragged to. He was attacked by different demons, and Krishna had to kill them one after another. แล้วก็เหมือนกันตอนที่ตอนที่กฤษณาทรงอยู่ที่บรรดาวันเนี่ยก็จะมีเหล่ามาเนี่ยมีมาก่อกวนแล้วกฤษณาก็ต้องทําการสังหารสังหารไปเรื่อย Yeah, there were demons like Aga and Baka and Putana, and they were all attacking Krishna. Krishna had to kill them. But it was no trouble for Krishna. It was just like a game for Krishna. He was like playing with them. And he lived in the village in Vrindavan with his mother and his brothers and friends. And, and Krishna enjoyed many pastimes. Like one of the things he did was stealing the butter. Stealing the butter, he was having good fun. We have to understand. Krishna was in the village where all the cows were being kept, and. There was a lot of milk and butter made, so Krishna was enjoying the the, the local produce, the butter. Now, when people steal things, we think, "Oh, it's very, it's very bad. It's a crime." But when Krishna was stealing the butter, it was a pleasure. The people were enjoying. He's a little boy. He's stealing butter. They were enjoying the pastime. And Krishna is worshipped even today as a butter thief, and we call him the Makin Chor, and we will worship Krishna for stealing the butter. And Krishna is famous for stealing butter, and in this pastime gave great pleasure to Krishna's devotees. So Krishna performed many pastimes for the pleasure of his devotees there in Vrindavan. And and Prabhupada explains that these pastimes are meant to attract people to the pastimes of Krishna. If they want people want to understand the absolute truth, then they have to understand Lord Krishna. And then there was also Lord Krishna's pastimes with the cowherd boys was also very much appreciated. Krishna is said Krishna can't be understood by the the impersonalists. The impersonalists they only know about the Brahman. And then, who he mentioned, like Lubla, yeah, who has a message, I'll tell you, Shanghai, for how, yeah, 
Or the, these jnanis who are only fixed on the Brahman and they only cultivate their speculative knowledge, they don't understand the pastimes of Krishna. And even some devotees, they worship Krishna and they consider themselves to be the servant and Krishna is their master. But the, the, the cowherd boys, they're in a very special position that they're able to play with Krishna just like Krishna is an ordinary person. Because these cowherd boys have performed many pious activities over many lifetimes. So, so Krishna is always enjoying transcendental pastimes with his devotees. And they have different relationships with Krishna. Some are in the relationship of neutrality, which is called Santaras. And then some are in Dasharas, they are servants of Krishna. And then some are in Sakyaras, they are friends of Krishna. And then there is also Vatsalya Rasa, which means they like a parent to Krishna. And, and, and then there's the highest, there's Madhurya Ras, which is the Rasa of conjugal love. So there are five different relationships with Krishna. So somebody is a friend, somebody is a servant, somebody is a parent, somebody is a lover. So we all have one one particular ras with Krishna. We are in one particular relationship with Krishna. But in the beginning we have to all be servants of Krishna. And when we go on practicing more and more, we'll come to understand what is our actual relationship with Krishna. So it said, Lord Krishna never goes out of Vrindavan. That's Krishna's home. He he he's, he feels the greatest pleasure to be in Vrindavan. We should understand Vrindavan is a dam. It's called the dam. Vrindavan dam. Dam is the place where Krishna resides eternally. Vrindavan 
เป็นสถานที่ที่กฤษณาเนี่ยทรงอาศัยอยู่ที่นั่นนิรันดร So we should understand that place, Vrindavan, is not material; it's a spiritual place. Everything connected with Krishna's pastimes is spiritual; it's not material. So we may wonder. So if Krishna never leaves Vrindavan, so how does he manage to take care of the whole of the creation? So this is explained in the Bhagavad Gita in the thirteenth chapter. It said there that Krishna pervades the material creation by his part known as Paramatma or Super Soul. So Krishna doesn't have. He doesn't. He doesn't touch the material creation. He doesn't do the. Krishna doesn't have to worry about doing material creation or maintenance and destruction. Krishna ne song me tong me kwam krang mon kiao ka kan sang ka kan anurak liwa kan tham lai thang wat thu. Krishna gets other people to do these things for him. Krishna ne song hai kon eun ne ma du lai ngan ne son ni ton ni hai kwam prao dai. First of all, he has his expansion, the Paramatma, and the Paramatma arranges for all, a lot of this. We are all atmas, but there's one supreme Paramatma. That's the expansion of Krishna. So we have to understand that Krishna consciousness is a science. There are materialistic yogis who try to analyze and meditate on the elements of the material creation. ประจันก็มีนักโยคีทางโลกวัตถุเนี่ยพยายามที่จะวิเคราะห์แล้วก็ทำสมาธิอยู่ที่ยี่สิบสี่ปัจจัยแห่งการสร้างทางวัตถุ But they they don't have any information about the supreme lord. แต่พวกเขาเนี่ยไม่มีความรู้อะไรเลยเกี่ยวกับองค์พระควาน And then the transcendentalists. But they're impersonalists, so they also don't know about the Supreme Lord. แล้วก็มีอีกประเภทหนึ่งคือเป็นนักทิพนิยมที่ไม่เชื่อในรูปลักษณ์พวกนี้เนี่ยเขาก็ไม่มีความรู้เกี่ยวกับองค์พระควานแต่ไม่มีข้อมูลเกี่ยวกับพระเจ้าสูงสุด They think they have found the Supreme when they find the Brahma Brahma Jyoti, but they don't know there's something higher than the Brahma Jyoti. เขาคิดว่าเขาเนี่ยได้เข้าถึงสัตธรรมสูงสุดแล้วโดยที่เขารู้ถึงบรมจุติแต่ว่านั้นเนี่ยยังมันยังไม่ใช่ If we want to see the absolute truth, we have to go through the Brahm Jyoti. แต่ถ้าเกิดว่าเราอยากจะเข้าใจถึงสัตธรรมสูงสุดเนี่ยเราจะต้องไปเหนือบรมจุติ But before we get to the Brahma Jyoti, we first of all have to get through the twenty-four material elements, and then into the Brahma Jyoti, and then through the Brahma Jyoti, then you can see the Supreme Lord. So we see the prayer is being offered here, praying to remove that 
dazzling effulgence. This dazzling effulgence in Sanskrit is called Haranmaya Patra. So if we want to see, if we actually want to see the, the Supreme Lord, we have to go through that covering. So that the Paramatma is one of the expansions of Krishna. Right, mentioned here, it's mentioned Vishnu, that there are three different forms of Vishnu Tattva. So one of the Vishnu Tattvas is, well there are three forms of the Vishnu Tattva, one is called Mahavishnu and then there's Garbhadakshaya Vishnu in the universe and then there's Shirodakshaya Vishnu. Garbo Dakshai Vishnu in the universe. Me Garbo Dakshai Vishnu Yunetakawan. And then from Garbo Dakshai Vishnu comes the form of Shiro Dakshai Vishnu. Dagalanta Garbo Dakshai Vishnu got a man. Uh, and Shiva Dakshai Vishnu is laying on, he's on the island of Sweta Dweep, which is a, a Vaikuntha planet, which is within the universe. Uh, and he is... Yeah, and he expands himself as the super soul in the heart of all living entities. And so we know in the in the material world there are three very important deities, Brahma, Vishnu and Shiva. So that Vishnu, that is Shirodakashai Vishnu. So that that form of Vishnu is all, as Paramatma, he's all pervading because he's in the heart of everyone. He's even in the hearts of the demigods. And then Garbhodakashai Vishnu, he is, he is, in, he is at the, he created the water which filled up half of the universe at the bottom of the universe. Haribo? Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj. Yeah, you can't hear me. Yeah, only until he he created the water and after that. Yeah, the water came, perspiration came from his body and it made an ocean in the bottom half of the universe. Okay. So he he lays there on the on that water. He lays down on Anantashesha is there with him and he lays down on the water and and the, and the lotus flower comes from his navel and Lord Brahma takes birth. Okay. 
แล้วก็มีสายมีสายดอกบัวเนี่ยมาจากปรากฏออกมาจากพระนาภีของพระองค์แล้วก็พระพรหมก็ทรงปรากฏ And then the Mahavishnu or Mahavishnu is also called Karanudakeshayi Vishnu. And he is laying on the k o j i l Ocean. And he is the he is the first he is the first Purusha. He is the first. Form of Vishnu, and he creates all the universes. So we have to go through the twenty-four material elements, and then we come to the Vishnu Tattvas. So if we study the the material material philosophy or empiric philosophy, then we will only realize the Brahma Jyoti. แต่ถ้าเกิดว่าเราเนี่ยศึกษาเกี่ยวกับปรัชญาผู้ปรัชญาผู้ช่างสังเกตเนี่ยเราจะแค่มาในการรู้แจ้งแห่งระดับของบรมโจติเท่านั้น And that Brahma Jyoti is only the light coming from the body of Krishna. แล้วก็บรมโจติเนี่ยเป็นแค่แสงสว่างที่มาจากร่างกายของพระองค์เท่านั้น And that is also described. We quoted from the Bhagavad Gita, and then it's also described like that in the Brahma Samhita. In the Brahma Samhita is described that there are millions and millions of universes, and in each universe there's many many planets. แต่ที่บายบอกว่าภายในล้านล้านและล้านล้านจักรวาลมีดาวเคราะห์จำนวนนับไม่ถ้วน And each planet is different from the others. มันต่างจากต่างต่างจากที่อื่น And and all of these planets of the material world they're situated in a corner of the Brahma Jyoti. ซึ่งมันแตกต่างจากดาวเคราะห์ดวงเงินตามสภาวะพื้นฐานของจักรวาลและดาวเคราะห์ทั้งหมดนี้เนี่ยสถิตอยู่ในมุมหนึ่งของบรมโจติ The Brahma Jyoti is the rays from the body of Krishna. บรมโจติเนี่ยเป็นรัศมีจากภาวรกายขององค์พระวานคุชนะ So this is stated in the Brahma Samhita. Lord Brahma is describing this. อันนี้นะได้อ้างมาจากพระมัสมิตาซึ่งพระพรหมเนี่ยเป็นผู้เป็นผู้ตรัส And we can see here in the Ishopanishad it says the same thing. This mantra in the Ishopanishad says the same thing as what said in the Brahma Samhita. แล้วในอิโชปานิชัดเนี่ยก็กล่าวไว้เช่นกันเป็นสิ่งสิ่งเดียวกันที่ที่โชปานิชัดบอกในประมาสมิตาก็กล่าวกัน So this mantra is a prayer to to the supreme lord to ask him to remove that light so we can see his face แล้วก็ก็คือการการที่บอกการที่ปรารถนาบอกว่าขอให้พระองค์เนี่ยทรงขจัดแสงแสงเจิดจัดนี้เพื่อที่จะสามารถเห็นดวงหน้าของพระองค์ได้ So Srila Prabhupada quotes some scriptural evidence which describe the Brahma the Brahma Jyoti. So it's described that in the spiritual realm, beyond the material covering, is the unlimited Brahman effulgence. ครอบวัตถุเป็นรัศมีประมาณอันไร้ขอบเขต
So that Brahman effulgence is free from all material contamination. And the, that the, the Brahman is like a, it's a white light, and it's understood by transcendentalists to be the light of all lights. So in that place, then the spiritual world there, there is no need of sunshine, moonshine, fire or electricity. We, they don't need any, but it's very bright there. It's very bright. Everything is, everything is very bright. There's no darkness. And whatever light we have here in the material world, that is just a reflection of the light coming from the spiritual world. So that Brahman, the Brahma, that Brahman, the Brahma Jyoti, it's in the front and it's in the back, it's in the north, in the south, in the east and in the west, it's over the head and it's below also. So that Brahman effulgence is spread everywhere, both in the material and the spiritual sky. And perfect knowledge means to know that Krishna is the basis of this Brahman effulgence. And if we want to know this from the scriptures, then you have to read the Srimad Bhagavatam. Srimad Bhagavatam was written by Srila Vyasadev and he, he explains that the Srimad Bhagavatam describes the Supreme Absolute Truth as Brahman, Paramatma and Bhagavan. So Srila Vyasadeva said everyone will know him according to how they realize him. Some people will realize him only as Brahman, some people will realize him as Paramatma and others will know him as Bhagavan. And Srila Vyasadeva never says that anybody can become God. The Supreme Truth is not an ordinary person. So we should never think that we are all God. We, can, we cannot become God. If we were the Supreme, we wouldn't need to pray to Krishna here. We're praying to the Supreme Lord. Why are we praying to Him? Because He's so Supreme and we're not. So the, the prayer is that please remove that covering so we can see your real face. 
พราะฉะนั้นคำอธิษฐานนะที่นี้ก็คืออธิษฐานว่าขอให้พระองค์ทรงขจัดแสงรัศมีอันเจิดจรับนี้ออกไปเพื่อที่ข้าพเจ้าจะสามารถทอดพระเนตรดวงหน้าของพระองค์ได้ Alright so we'll stop here today เราจะเราก็จะจบคำบรรยายไว้เพียงเท่านี้ในวันนี้นะคะ Are there any questions ใครมีคำถามไหมคะใช่ยังมาแต่เดียวเช่นค่ะโอเคนะคะนะคะนะคะนะคะ So how about um Paramatma in every living entity heart? So Paramatma can control our heart or not? Uh, just such as um we can love someone or hate someone or change my mind, Guru Maharaj. So this this is described in the Bhagavad Gita. The Paramatma is not controlling. But it's overseeing, and he's a witness. He remembers all the things you've done, all the things we have done, and he carries these memories with us from one life to the next. He gives us knowledge. He, when we want, if we need the knowledge, he'll give us the knowledge, and if we want to forget, he'll allow us to forget. And he gives us. Uh, Remem knowledge, remembrance, and forgetfulness. He, he can help you to remember, and he can allow you to forget. So Krishna is in the heart as a paramatma, and he fac facilitates according to what you are trying to do. He knows. Mm. And this mean about about our mind. Wait, about wait, 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 wait. Okay. Let her translate. Okay, ค่ะสิ่งสิ่งนี้นะคะก็ได้บอกไว้ในภาวกิตาแล้วว่าปรมาตมาเนี่ยจะอยู่ในใจของเราไม่ได้จะเป็นผู้ที่ควบคุมการกระทําอะไรของเราแต่ว่าท่านเนี่ยแต่พระองค์เนี่ยจะอยู่ในรูปแบบของการเป็นขยานในกิจกรรมที่เรากระทําทุกๆอย่างจะคอยจําทุกๆกิจกรรมที่เราทําเนี่ยกับกับเราไปได้ตลอด He is the overseer, and he is the permitter. So he sanctions the different activities of the living entities. Sometimes we want to do something. Krishna will help. He may he give knowledge. He may help us to. He may tell, help. He allow us to remember, or he may allow us to forget. Yeah, when we when we forget, then we we can enjoy more. If we have to remember about all the suffering. Which is here in the material world, then it's difficult for us to enjoy. So we want to enjoy material life. Oh, okay, you want to enjoy, so Krishna allows you to forget. You want to, you want to go ahead and try to enjoy the material world. Krishna will let you do it. <laughs> And if you want to remember, then Krishna will help us. How we what we need to do to get out of this material world. Krishna will help us. He will give us the intelligence. What we need to do. The problem is, our hearts are not very pure, 
And sometimes we think Krishna from the heart is telling me, but it's actually not Krishna at all, it's actually our own mind. We're thinking yep. it's Krishna, but it's not Krishna, it's our own mind. You have to be very careful. Whether it's, is it really super soul or is it just your own mind? That's why the super soul was there to guide us. But the external manifestation of the super soul is the spiritual master. And it's not enough to just depend on the super soul, the Lord in the heart, because we're not so pure. We may be listening to our own mind, we may not be hearing Krishna. So you have to have also guidance from sadhu, shastra and guru. แล้วก็ดาวนายรูปของปรมาตมาที่เป็นรูปเอ่อประธรรมเนี่ยก็คือจะเป็นในรูปในตัวแทนของปรมาตมาที่เราสามารถพูดคุยได้และได้ฟัง
to actually know your relationship with Krishna. You have to be at Bhava Bhakti. And to come up to Bhava Bhakti means you've gone through an art, anartha. You've got rid of all the dirty things from the heart. And you're fully convinced about Krishna consciousness and you're fully absorbed in the service of Krishna constantly chanting the holy name and very eager to hear about Krishna and you use every minute of your time for the service of Krishna. Mm -hmm. So when you come to that level of bhava bhakti then there may be that you feel particularly inspired by some particular devotee in Krishna Leela. Just like, you know, you may be inspired by Mother Yashoda or you may be inspired by Gopi, maybe like Srimati Radharani. Now, of course, we cannot become any of these people. We cannot become Mother Yashoda and we cannot become Srimati Radharani. But we can learn to follow in their footsteps and that is called Raga Nuga Bhakti following in the footsteps of great devotees. Okay, Marie. Now, just because you're a woman, in a woman's body, doesn't mean that you have to be a gopi, you know, you may be a cowherd boy in the spiritual world. Mm. You may be attracted to be a cowherd boy. No, it doesn't. <laughs> It doesn't mean you're, you know, it doesn't mean you're gay or anything, you know, it, it, it just somehow that you're attracted, that you feel so attracted to hear about the cowherd boys and what, and, and some, we see Lord Chaitanya and all the devotees, his associates, they were all in the mood of gopis. So it doesn't mean that they wanted to be women, but they understood that their desire in the spiritual world was to to serve Krishna in that way. Mm. Okay, Maharaj. So it's a very, very advanced level of Krishna consciousness. Mm. So, okay. you, you know, people are attracted, they want to hear. Some people like to hear, they spend a lot of time just hearing about of course, when we talk about that, this is these Krishna's pastimes in Vrindavan, particularly. But, but to some extent also in Dwarka. To some extent, we see Krishna in Dwarka, you know, with his wives and uh, his pastimes there in Dwarka. But the, the emphasis is more focused on Vrindavan, it's Vrindavan where Krishna is in the Supreme Perfection. Krishna is displaying all the rasas, the Supreme, all the different rasas are there in Vrindavan. And his most intimate loving affairs with his devotees is there in Vrindavan. So, the, the process is, first of all, we have to become really steady and very fixed up in our sadhana, do a lot of chanting and hearing. You know, it's not enough just to be a good devotee. You have to be really a pure devotee and you have to be fully absorbed in Krishna consciousness. Every moment, you know, that you're really thinking about Krishna all the time and fully dedicated. Mm -hmm. And you've gone through, you've got rid of all the doubts and all the contamination in the heart and you just want to become fully attached to Krishna, Krishna's service. Mm -hmm. Okay, now we have a question from Vaishnava Vani. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances, all glory to Srila Prabhupada. Uh, uh, Guru Maharaj, I went to a house where they have a mouse trap. They have a strong glue, so it's very the glue is very strong. So the mouse will come and uh, 
uh, get caught in the glue. I went to their house and I told this is a very cruel way of uh, catching the mouse. Uh, it should be at least um, uh, more merciful and they throw away the glue after that, something like this. Uh, I was thinking, did I interfere in the karma unnecessarily or uh, did I do something uh, wrong or uh, I should not have interfered in this? Because we often uh, hear in the class that it's not very good uh, uh, even to save a drowning man, right? <laughs> well, to save a drowning man, Prabhupada said, yeah, we should save him because he said public opinion is there. And so if you save a drowning man, it's good PR. Oh, that a Hare Krishna person saved a drowning man, that Hare Krishna people are very kind. So that's good PR. Now if you didn't save him, you know, if you just stood and said, oh, it's his karma, they'll think, oh, Hare Krishna people are so callous and hard-hearted. Right? So that's relating to human beings. Of course, when we talk about mice or rats, it's a little different. But yes, you're right, uh, it's not very nice to capture mice in, the, in that way, to stick their feet and get their feet stuck, they can't move anywhere. Uh, it's difficult to know what to do in these situations, you know. What you do, you should get a cage and capture the thing in the cage and then you take the, and then the cage, then what do you do with the mice? Then take the mice far away. <laughs> take it into the where? Take it into the woods or something. And let it run about in the in the in the park or some. Put it in the park. Let it run. Somewhere else will eat it. Cat will get it. <laughs> I don't know. It's difficult to know what to do. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> But, uh, of course, if we were devotees, if people were devotees, then we don't want devotees to do these kind of things. It's not proper. It's, it's, it's difficult, you know, just like we get a lot of insects here in Mayapur, we get a lot of ants, many ants, millions of ants sometimes they come, big numbers. Uh, oh my goodness, and they go, and they get everywhere and everything, you know. What to do, you know. Somehow, you have to do something to try to save yourself. You put down some kind of, they have some kind of powder or chalks or stuff, they put it down and then they don't come. I don't know. But if you didn't put this, if you don't put that powder down, the, the, all the ants will come. And, and they, there's really a lot of ants. <laughs> what to do? Yes, Guru Maharaj. So, we have... Uh, Guru Maharaj, one more question. Like, uh, does prasadam make a lot of difference? When I was staying in India, like, uh, 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 yeah, the, it was prasadam, but uh, it was not really cooked by devotees who are very serious. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I was thinking, does it make a lot of difference? Or if we chant and hear more, it can compensate for not uh, having uh, uh, like uh, really cooked by devotees. Uh, because sometimes in the home, they cook it and offer, but the mood is not the same. Yes, it's true. Well, there's qualities in these things, just like we say, there's different levels of devotees. So the prasadam will be, you know, the prasadam will be kanista or majam or uttama. Yeah, it won't be the, the highest level. You can tell when somebody is really a good devotee, then their cooking will be very, very tasty and very pure. You can, you know, you can relish the quality of their cooking by their 
the, the quality of their devotion by their cooking. The mood, you know, the mood, just the mood which is there. It does make a lot of effect to the, 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 the prasadam. So, cooking, traditionally, it's done by people who are brahmanas. They should be twice initiated people. And they have to be strictly following the regulative principles. If they're not strictly following, then prasadam won't be quite the same. It's not going to be so good. And I know many people who, they won't eat it. If the people who cook are not strictly following, they don't want to eat their cooking. That's why we encourage devotees not to eat out. We don't like to go out to restaurants to eat because that's a problem, that the people cooking in restaurants are not devotees. So they have a lot of karma. And you eat food cooked by non-devotees, you get their karma. So the food, the, the people who cook and the people who offer, they are very, they have to be pure. They have to be strict devotees. They have to be faithfully following four principles and daily chanting 16 rounds. Otherwise it's not really prasadam. And in the Bhagavad Gita, you see in the commentaries in the Bhagavad Gita, the commentary by Baladeva Vijayabhusan, he describes about, they said if women are uh, in their, you know, in their menstruation cycle at the time, then they, they shouldn't cook. They shouldn't be cooking to Krishna because they're not clean. And so that's considered a contaminated period in the, in, the, in the month for the lady. And so that time she should, she should just rest because she's, she's contaminated. Now th that, that can be a challenge sometimes. Some temples, even some temples, we have that problem that the ladies, you know, they're, they're needed to do the service and if they're contaminated then there's no one to do the service. So what to do in that situation? Well, in that situation, if there's really no one to do, then they have to do it. But it's not very good. Hmm? And we try to make arrangements to avoid that. You understand? Yes, Guru Maharaj, I understand. Uh, can they cut the vegetables and uh, they, they, they cannot work in the fire, but can they cut vegetables, something like that, yes. in case of yes. lack of resources? Yes, yeah, we see that, that they, they allow that, that people coming to the temple, they can cut the vegetables and things. And, and they do that, you know, you go to it somewhere like, uh, I went to, I remember, I went to Nathwara some long time ago now. Not what, but they have all the vegetables, they give the vegetables and the ladies will be out there and they'll be sitting there cutting. Anybody can come and cut the vegetables. But the cooking, that's done by the, the people who are strict devotees. Mm -hmm. Yes, Guru Maharaj. I am also cooking for the satsang, but I am not always satisfied with my cooking, Guru Maharaj. I hear and uh, chant and a little bit try to cook in the proper mood. Yeah, I hope I can improve. Well, that's good. You should never be satisfied. You should always want to improve. It's very nice mood. If you're not satisfied, yes, you should think I'm not good enough. That's a good attitude. We shouldn't think, oh, I'm very good. <laughs> no, we should always want to do better for the pleasure of Krishna. That's very nice. Yes? Okay, so Sri Devi Gorangi's got a question now. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances, all glories to Srila Prabhupada. Uh, Guru Maharaj, as Guru Maharaj uh, uh, advised me and instructed me, I started my reading group and I finished chapter one of Bhagavad Gita. So we'll be very honored and pleased and very fortunate if Guru Maharaj can come into our class. So when as I was finishing chapter 1, uh, text 40 of Bhagavad Gita chapter 1, 
uh, some of the ladies in the group they are not devotees so they have t- they took issue with this with with uh, with the purport that the spiritual progress of state and community depends on the chastity and faithfulness of the women and that the women are prone to degradation so there was a discussion on this so may i please have Srila Guru Maharaj uh, further elaborations on Srila Prabhupada's purport thank you guru maharaj women are prone to degradation well yes Yes, women are prone to degradation, but men also, not only women. <laughs> the women are prone, the men are also prone. But women do have that tendency, you know, that they're kind and, you know, soft-hearted and they can be easily tricked or cheated by other people. That's one of the problems, that they can be gullible, they get taken advantage of by others. We, we know women as the, the fair sex and the weaker sex and women generally they should be protected. Why do they need protection? Because that that's the problem, that they can be taken advantage of, they can be exploited, they're easily exploited by others. Isn't it true? Yes, Guru Maharaj, we read a lot in the papers how they just gave away their life savings to a Casanova like that. So many times. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, well, these things go on, yeah. But, yeah, that, that's one of the problems that uh, women have to be protected. And we see how in, uh, particularly like in Malaysia, you know, the, the ladies, the Muslim ladies, how they, how they have some rules and regulations about their dress, how they cover their hair and everything. That's to protect them. That's for their protection. Prabhupada described, he said, when he was a young boy, he said his mother wouldn't even go next door without going in a palanquin. She'd have people come in a palanquin, she'd get in the palanquin and they'd take her to the next door. So the, this way the woman would, she wouldn't go in the public, you know, she would, that, that was the, the level of chastity which used to be there in Prabhupada's childhood, talking like a hundred years ago. So yeah, we're, you know, and now look at the, the state of the world, look how things are, there's so much degradation. Of course, they're trying to, trying to protect women. We do see there's a lot of things going on trying to protect women. But like here in India, they try to give a lot of protection for the women. They're, they're really heavy on people who make any offenses, do any harm to ladies. They get severe punishment. So there is a lot of concern in the society to try to protect women. See, the Vedic culture is women should always be protected well, by, before marriage by their father and then married with their husband and in old age then by their children. That's, that was the society because women tend to be soft-hearted, they're prone to be cheated and got, they get misled. So, it's, you know, the, the ladies you were reading with, they, did, they took objection to this? Yes, Guru Maharaj, they took objection to women not very intelligent and therefore not trustworthy, 
these are all uh, modern educated women so they are not very used to vedic scriptures and was their first time actually uh -huh. so i tried to explain to them did it, did it actually say not educated not trustworthy uh, it says here yes yes guru maharaj text 40 says according to chanakya pandita women are generally not very intelligent and therefore not trustworthy so they took issue to this this statement <laughs> Well, Chanakya Pandit, of course, that's a long time ago, but uh, not not very intelligent. Well, that, I mean, it's not just, not only women, <laughs> men also are not very intelligent. You know, we're also not so intelligent. We also get, it's not only women, but women are particularly in need of the protection. That is the, the point. That, you know, there is that tendency, people, that they, if they're going to cheat someone, they'll look, you know, they think it's easier to cheat women than to cheat a man. You know, as you said, you know, women can, you know, they can give away their fortune. Somebody comes with a, a story and the story breaks, breaks your heart and they'll give everything to the, to the man and then the man goes off, you never see him again. So, of course, when it says less intelligent, we're not talking about material intelligence. We're talking about spiritual intelligence, to understand the higher goals of life. So, material intelligence, oh yeah, we know, and there's so many women in higher education today, women, very intelligent, most of the postgraduate studies courses are all full with women. Yeah. So we can't say women are not intelligent materially, but we're talking about spiritual intelligence. Mm. So they have to understand, they're not familiar with what we mean by spiritual intelligence. Mm. So anyway, if they keep reading, gradually it will become clearer to them. Yes, Guru Maharaj. Thank you so much for the, for the service, Guru Maharaj. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for your answer. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you for your kind question and understanding. I wish you good luck with the reading quote. When are you doing it? I'm doing it every Thursday night at 10 p.m. 10 to 11, 15 p.m. Guru Maharaj. They only want it once a week. I tried to persuade them to have more days, uh, but they were not too keen. They're happy just with once a week. Once a week, okay. Relation time, 10 p.m. 10 p.m., okay, that's 7.30 here. Well, that's reasonable, 7.30. I could join maybe sometime. Thursday night, okay, we'll see if I'm free on Thursday, I'll come there. Thank you so much, Guru Maharaj. Send me the link. Sure, Guru Maharaj. Thank you so much. The other ladies are all on Zoom with you, are they? Yeah, they're all on, on Zoom. They're all on Zoom. Yeah. I also have uh, uh, one of my former PhD students who is of um, a Chinese ethnicity. She's very keen. Uh, and then I also have a, a three young, uh, four young persons, some in the 50s age group, mostly in the 50s and 40s age group, and then uh, one in the 30s age group, and uh, one, uh, four young ones, 20s age group. So oh. there's a range of the age. Good, yeah, nice. Okay, sounds interesting. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Okay, so thank Archana very much for her translation. Thank you, Gurudev, for the opportunity. <laughs> Hare Krishna. So, Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Hare Krishna.